Okie dokie, today we're going to be looking at uh, electromagnetic wave theory, <clears throat> and we're going to derive the the fact that um, electric and magnetic waves um, <clears throat> travel at the speed of light. So let's get started with this. Um, we'll have an uh, electric magnetic wave uh, here, uh, moving with a velocity uh, from left to right in the positive x direction, and... Uh, Electric, uh, in a, in an electromagnetic wave, the electric field and the magnetic fields are always perpendicular, and they're also perpendicular to the, uh, velocity, uh, vector of the wave. So here's our wave coming in to a little closed loop here. Okay. Now, I made it a fat loop just so you can see it a little bit better, but it's really supposed to be a very thin uh, loop like this. But I didn't want to make it, if I made it thin, I couldn't draw everything in it. So it's actually thin in the x direction, okay? It's tall in the y direction, but thin in the x direction. But, uh, you'll see why I had to show so you could see it very well. Um, <clears throat> let's assume that the wave is traveling at a velocity v. Um, uh, then, uh, uh, this, the, the width, the thin width of the, of the, uh, the square here, uh, the loop here, is going to be delta x, a little piece of the x axis, and the delta x will equal the velocity of the wave, uh, times the, uh, time it travels delta, the, the differential time it travels delta t. So that's the thickness of the, uh, the thickness, uh, the width of the, uh, loop. And then the height of the loop, I'm just going to call H right there, okay? Um, so I just want to show you that the area of the loop, therefore, uh, will be, um, <clears throat> the area will be uh, the width times the height, which is uh, V delta T, V delta T uh, times H right there. So we have the area of the loop, and we have an uh, electromagnetic wave traveling this way. We're going to use something called Faraday's Law, one of... Uh, <clears throat> one of Maxwell's equations, which I've done a video on, if you want to go watch it. And uh, Faraday's Law says the uh, uh, the integral over a closed loop of the electric field dotted with the uh, uh, differential length vector uh, is equal to negative, uh, the derivative of the magnetic flux uh, divided by, uh, I'm sorry, with respect to time. So um, uh, here we have uh, we have a cons uh, we we will say we have a con uh, when it when this when this electromagnetic wave hits this wall right here uh, we'll have a certain value for the electric field um, and um, we'll have to do the integral around the loop um, but it's the dot product so I hope you should know what the dot product that uh, if you uh, if you do this part of the integral right here. Um, the electric field will be perpendicular uh, to this part. So this part of the integral uh, will be zero. And this part over here on this part of the loop, uh, the electric field will also be perpendicular. So it will be zero in that part also. Uh, for this part, um, we'll have just the electric field times the distance. So uh, the electric field goes up. But the loop, we're going to do the integral counterclockwise, by the way. So right here, the loop is going down. The electric field is going up. And that's why we have a negative uh, electric field uh, magnitude uh, times the, uh, the the distance it goes, which, of course, is h. You know, uh, if it's an h on this side, it's going to be h on the other side also. So um, th there's actually four integrals here. Two of them are zero. And this one is this. And then you ask, well, what about this uh, part right here? Well, what we're considering is when the, the electric field just hits this wall, we're not worrying about when the electric field hits this wall because when the electric field hits this wall, the magnetic field will just be changing inside the loop also. So we're going to have the electric field just hit this wall. So actually this uh, part of the integral is also zero. So we're done with the integral. Let's go take our uh, derivative of the flux over here. Um, the derivative of the flux, of course, flux is uh, uh, B, uh, B times area, magnetic field times area. So we have magnetic field, we have the area, we have the magnetic field magnitude when it reaches this wall, uh, times the area of the loop, um, divided by the differential time, delta T. The, I'm sorry, the differential area over the differential time is... Uh, uh, very similar if it's very thin, uh, element, 
uh, area element, then um, the different the 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 differential uh, area uh, is very close to the derivative here. Okay, so this stayed the same. Uh, by the way, in Faraday's laws, of course, it's negative, so the negatives canceled. Uh, we have the B, and now we need the differential area, and I told you the differential area here was HV over delta T. So HV delta T, and then we have a delta T on the bottom uh, from the equation right here. So this is the differential area. Uh, this is delta T. This is B right here, and the negatives canceled. All right, so this became this, and this became this. And um, if we do a little bit of algebra, we get E equals V v b which is kind of interesting it tells us that um that uh the electric field here is the magnitude of the electric field is equal to the velocity uh times the magnitude of the uh magnetic field so that's an interesting thing uh let's take a look at a uh, a different um uh, uh uh loop here we have the exact same wave we had over here but now we're going to see what it does to this loop over here so here it comes along, uh, and by the way, this is thin. This is a thin loop right here, so there I show it thin, but I'm showing it thick so you can see. So this again will be delta x, which will be v delta t, just like it was before. The area will be the same, the area of this is the same as the area of that, h v delta t. Uh, here we're going to use Ampere's law. Uh, so Ampere's law is one of also one of Ma uh, uh, Maxwell's equations. Um, and so uh, it says the, the integral over a closed loop of the magnetic field vector dotted with the uh, differential length vector is equal to mu naught times the current going through the loop, uh, through the loop, uh, plus, uh, I'm sorry, mu naught times the current through the uh, loop, or the sum of the currents through the loop, if you've seen my Maxwell's equations uh, video, plus uh, mu naught epsilon naught, uh, the derivative of the electric flux, uh, with respect to time, right there. So, here comes the wave along here. Well, the integral of B will go through counterclockwise again. Uh, when the B, well, when it's, it's a dot product again, just like we said here, the dot product. So any B in length that's perpendicular, like B is going this way and the length is going this way. So this part of the integral is zero, and this part of the integral, of course, is zero, because this length and this B vector are perpendicular. And we want to know when the B vector just hits this wall, so we don't worry about this wall, this, the, the, so it hasn't gotten to this wall, so therefore the integral apart along this will be zero. So this will be zero, this part of the integral will be zero, and this will be zero. When B hits this wall, of course, uh, this length uh, is H also. Sorry, I labeled, uh, the H over here, of course it's H over there. When this B hits this wall, uh, the integral will simply be B times the length, so it's B times H. So this integral is three zero, three zeros, and plus uh, BH for this part of the integral. Um, there is no current going through the loop here. There's no current wires going through the loop, so therefore this portion of Ampere's law is zero. Um, I, uh, Okay, so we have mu naught, uh, epsilon naught, uh, the flux of the electric field, of course, is uh, electric field times the differential area over the differential time, and the, this will become this, delta time. And we already told you, just like we did before, differential area uh, is equal to uh, HV delta T over delta T, and there's your electric field. So this becomes this, and this becomes this. And if we do a little bit of algebra here, uh, we'll get that B is equal to uh, mu naught epsilon naught electric field times V. Now we're going to do something interesting and take our result here and plug it into this equation. After all, this is the same electro, uh, magne electromagnetic wave, so these magnetic fields are all the same. Um, so uh, if we take VB and plug it right into there, uh, we'll get, uh, let's see, we'll get the B is here, mu naught, uh, epsilon naught, and an E is BV, and then there'll be another V, which will be V squared. So if you plug VB into E, you will get this right here. 
And if you do a little bit of algebra on this, uh, we can solve for V. Uh, the B's cancel, of course, and V equals 1 over the square root of mu naught epsilon naught. And uh, mu naught, of course, is 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. Uh, epsilon naught is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. Uh, 1 over the square root of those two numbers multiplied uh, is equal to 3 times 10 to the 8th, which looks a little bit familiar because, of course, it's the speed of light right there. So we know now that this electro an electromagnetic wave travels at the same speed as light, which means light is an electromagnetic wave. Okay? Not only that, but we can actually go back to this equation now and say, hey, I know who Mr. Uh, v is. He's uh, the speed of light, C. And so we can write instead of E equals VB, we can write E equals CB, where electric field magnitude equals the um, uh, speed of light times the magnetic field uh, magnitude um, uh, for uh, uh, one specific electromagnetic uh, wave. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this uh, lecture, and I look forward to any comments at the bottom. Thank you very much.